guys, I'm back with another video for you today and I'm talking about diptyque in today's video. Are you a fan of diptyque? Let me know, put a comment down. Today I'm talking about diptyque's eau de parfum fragrances and this is a ranked list. I've got the top 15 list for you today, few remaining outside of the top 15, so they're gonna be as bonus options. But today, if you're interested in finding out about diptyque's eau de parfum fragrances in a ranked list by me, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about Diptyque. Are you a fan of Diptyque? If you're a fan of Diptyque, let me know you are and why you love Diptyque. If you're not a fan of Diptyque, let me know why and yeah, let me know why you don't love Diptyque. I'm a fan of Diptyque and I've been a fan since the early 2000s. I first discovered uh, Diptyque through uh, Carrie on Sex and the City, um, while, you know, watching that show, and then she had her bake handle. But there's been a store here in San Francisco for a long time. They were first on Maiden Lane, then they moved to another location, and now we have a second Diptyque store as well. And of course, there's a couple, I believe, in North Bay, and a couple, I believe, in the South Bay. So there's several stores here in, uh, uh, you know, San Francisco Bay Area for Diptyque fragrances and candles. So one thing before I get started, there is a new fragrance coming out from Diptyque. I think it launches early March. It's called Lo de Papier. I'm interested in uh, discovering this particular fragrance, but it wouldn't fit in this list because that's going to be eau de toilette concentration. So if anyone smelled this fragrance already, let me know what it smells like, put a comment down. But let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off at number 15 with Philosicus, this one right here. Yeah, this one's ranked low. I'm just a bit bored of it. I wore so much of it. It's been a big staple for Diptyque, probably the biggest seller for Diptyque. And uh, I think it's a great fragrance. It smells like figs. It was originally created by Olivia Giacobetti in 1996. The EDP launched in uh, 2012. Features notes of fig leaves, fig tree sap, fig tree accord, black pepper. It's got a milkiness, a very green quality, woodiness for sure, and some light spiciness. But I don't get much fruitiness from this one. It doesn't have that fruitiness that maybe I crave a little bit here. But in the end, it's a very solid fragrance and there's many fans of it. I'm just kind of bored of it. That's why I'm ranking it at number 15. So uh, what's outside of the number uh, 15, uh, as I said, will be in the bonus section. Stay tuned to find out what numbers those would be. Moving on to Dosan EDP at number 14. Uh, a 2013 launch, originally launched as EDT in 2005. This is created by Fabrice Pellegrin. If you watch throughout the whole video, you'll know that there's a lot of fragrances by Diptyque created by Fabrice Pellegrin. You're also going to hear about Olivier Peshot come up as well. He'll come up more towards the front. So this is tuberose, orange blossom, jasmine, amber wood, and sea air. Just imagine you're at some kind of an island. I believe this is inspired by Vietnam with the fragrance in the air, the tuberose plants, the orange blossom smell in the air, and then of course jasmine for more floral touches. And of course the fragrance settles to an amber wood base, but there's also sea air thrown in because you're on the coast. You've got that sea breeze, the sea air coming in hitting your nose with all those flowers. So that's what Dosan's all about at number 14. At number 13, it's Odominte. Yes, I really love this particular fragrance. I ranked it here at number 13 because it's not truly original. I have the original, which I wore quite a bit of in the 80s. Uh, it's Dracar Noir, but this is a really hefty version of that. It is pricier for sure. This is 2019 launch. It's once again Fabrice Pellegrin. It features notes of patchouli, geranium, mint, rose oxide. So this is kind of like a minty take on a fougere. And of course, Dracar Noir had mint in it in addition to the lavender and geranium. So it does remind me of that fragrance, that's why I ranked it here, but it is really, really great concentrated take on that uh, DNA of Dracar Noir. So Eau de Mente at number 13. So this one at number 12 is a woody fragrance and probably very much loved. This is probably one of the ones that gets a lot of hype in the community. This is Tam Dao EDP. This is a 2012 launch, originally launched in EDT in 2003. This is created by Daniel Moliere. This does feature that creamy, milky sandalwood, which I really love, but there's also cedar here. There's also cypress here, and there's also coriander. So it's kind of like a mixture between that creamy milky lactonic quality of sandalwood along with more of a granular chopped woods uh, 
consistency of uh, cedar. So you get both of the worlds here, creaminess and also the dryness of the woods. And then there's also this aromatic greenness of cypress coming in. And it's of course some fresh spice of coriander. Really a great fragrance. I've put it here because I'm excited more about the other fragrances, but definitely a solid sandalwood fragrance. Tam Dao at number 12. So up next at number 11, this is probably one of the earlier fragrances from this house and a very popular, it reminds me of their bay candle actually. This is L'Ambre Down Low in EDP. The original in EDP, oh, no, the original in EDT was launched in 1983, and this is created by Desmond Knox Leet. Features notes of rose, black currant buds, pettigran, black currant leaves. So basically, it's not necessarily uber rosy. There's a couple of other fragrances here I'm going to talk about that are uber rosy. This is more a bit fruity and very green, and I feel like the rose in this is very stemmy. So you have a very stemmy quality and it's a green rose rather than like this big lush jammy rose in your face and nothing but rose. For me the rose supports the black currant buds and of course the black currant leaves and the pettigran. So it's a very green earthy leafy woody and also floral fruity combination. Really popular fragrance I believe for a diptyque and of course as I said this does remind me a bit of bay candle from diptyque as well. L'Ambre Dom Low EDP at number 11. So at number 10 it's the oud from diptyque's uh, collection and this particular fragrance only comes in an EDP. This is Oud Palau launched in 2015, once again created by Fabrice Pellegrin. It's Oud Rose Incense and Vanilla, but I feel like there's definitely resinous touches here. There's some resins there and some spices, warm spices. For me, this is also like a really oomphy, nice take on something like uh, Dior's Oud Ispahan, but less rosy. In the end, it's a bit animalic with the Oud, but definitely a great Oud, really wonderful Oud, and that's why it's ranked at number 10. I do enjoy the other fragrance is more than this. So Oud Palau is at number 10. And then uh, number 9 is the tobacco fragrance from Diptyque. It's Volute in the EDP concentration. Of course we're only talking about EDP. There used to be an EDT which launched together with the EDP but the EDT has now been discontinued. I do have a backup bottle of it which I do appreciate. It's definitely fresher but I like the resinous intense qualities of the EDP here. This is once again created by Fabrice Pellegrin. It features honey, a Papanax, cinnamon, iris, tobacco, a uh, wonderful fragrance, very honeyed, very resinous, and a bit sweet with the honey as well. It's Volute from Diptyque at number nine. And at number eight, it's a newer fragrance, launched as a Middle East exclusive and kind of like a limited edition and they brought it back into the collection. This is Orilla, this one right here. Uh, this does remind me of Tuscan leather but I really love this because it's very very oomphy and very very luxurious. The notes are so beautiful in here, so alive when I'm wearing it, almost three-dimensional and that's what I like about it. That's why it's ranked higher but it's not necessarily a very original fragrance but I really love the inspiration or maybe the idea of something like Tuscan leather or ombre leather with this one. This is a 2021 launch. Once again, Fabrice Pellegrin, it features leather, iris, cedar, raspberry, pink pepper, vanilla, saffron. So it does have some vanillic, aromatic, spicy touches, but in the end, it's all about leather with a bit of a raspberry touch under there as well. So Orila is at number eight. So at number seven, I'm going with the fragrance Fleur de Peau, this one right here. This is a really delicious fragrance. It's definitely powdery and musky, and it's also got this very enveloping coziness about it because of the musk in here and also the ambrette seeds which is actually musky and then the ambretolide which is I believe a synthetic form of am ambrette seed. So it's a uber musky and powdery, a bit vegetal because of the ambrette. The iris in here also has some light vegetal touches and then some spice thrown in. I really enjoy this one. Really a wonderful offering. Musky, powdery, great fragrance for sure. Fleur de Peau. It is created by Olivier Peshaw and launched in 2018. Up next at number six it's Au Capital. This is the Chypre in the Diptyque family of fragrances, launched in 2020, just before the pandemic started. And this is also created by Olivier Peshaw. This is rose, bergamot, pink pepper, patchouli. It does hint at portrait of a lady a little bit, less warm, spicy, less uh, incense-y, and more patchouli 
and big jammy rose in your face and the spiciness of the pink pepper. Really a delicious fragrance. Au Capital from the house of Diptyque at number six. And then we've got Eau Duel at number five. It's the vanilla from Diptyque. This does come in an eau de toilette form. The eau de toilette launched in 2010 and then the eau de parfum version launched in 2013. It's once again created by Fabrice Pellegrin and it features notes of bourbon vanilla, incense, peppercorn, calamus. It's boozy, it's vanillic, it's spicy, it's delicious, it's resinous, it's ambery, and it's of course in your face vanilla and it's quite delicious. It's definitely a great vanilla fragrance. Eau Duel from the house of Diptyque at number five. Then we We've got a fragrance in a completely different bottle. At number four, it's 34 Boulevard Saint Germain EDP, this one right here. So this uh, collection of fragrances is uh, inspired by their address, 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. Uh, they have the Eau de Toilette version, which uh, I believe launched in the latter part of the 2000s, which I forgot to put down the date. This version launched in 2018, and I love, love, love this version. I like it because they don't mention patchouli. I feel like I get this kind of intense patchouli mixed in with vanilla, pink pepper, or pink berries with sandalwood. There's definitely a creamy quality about the sandalwood, and the vanilla qualities adds a sweet, there's also a bit of a medicinal touch in here a little bit, but man, it's a great fragrance. Really love it. It's 34 Boulevard Saint Germain uh, at uh, in the EDP concentration at number four. And if I didn't mention, that is also created by Olivier Peshaw. So I was never a really big fan of the original Eau de Toilette Eau Rose, but man, the Eau Rose and EDP, super fantastic and green. So it launched in 2022, it's this right here, and it's created by Fabrice Pellegrin once again. Features two kinds of rose, I believe there's three kinds of rose, but I'm mentioning Centifolia rose, Damascena rose, along with chamomile, lychee fruit, and artichoke. And to me, this is a very green rose because of the artichoke, but in the Lombardon Low, it was very green and the rose was kind of in the background. This definitely is in your face rose with the greenness of the artichoke accord that's in here. There's some light fruitiness in here and of course, that kind of tea-like floral sea dryness of chamomile. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Definitely deserves to be number three. I really love the way that smells and wears on me and so fantastic fragrance. And then at number two, it is Tempo, this one right here. This is a 2018 launch and it's created by Olivier Peshaw and this is the patchouli at Diptyque and it features notes of patchouli, mate, clary sage. There's definitely some other touches in here but for me it's a very green and earthy patchouli. The mate and the clary sage adds greenness but also some aromatic touches in there and the patchouli is not the chocolate cakey patchouli. It's more of the earthy green variety and it's a wonderful fragrance. It's Tempo from the house of Diptyque at number two, created by Olivier Pachot. And my number one, do you know that one? I speak about it all the time. This is Benjoin Bohème. I'm super in love with this particular fragrance. I love it and I love it uh, at number one. I love Benzoin and fragrances. You know, I love vanilla. Benzoin has similarities, but it's more resinous and not necessarily as sweet and gooey as vanilla. So it's a bit different texturally. But in addition to Benzoin, we've got Peru Balsam here, Rock Rose, Labdanum, and Spices. Man, it's fantastic. It's a great, great Benzoin fragrance. If you love the idea of vanilla, but you think vanilla is too sweet, but you like the idea of sweet fragrances, try Benjamin Bohem and discover Benzoin fragrances. And I think it's a great way to discover Benzoin fragrances here. Benjamin Bohem, it's a, a Olivier Pecho created fragrance uh, from 2015. Uh, do you want to also say they are moving this fragrance into bottles like this very soon. So if you have a bottle like this and can get it, this bottle is super gorgeous. So it'll be moved into a bottle like this Orilla. Anyway, Benjamin Bohemian number one. That's all I have for you today with the Diptyque fragrances. As I said, stay tuned for the bonus fragrances, which are the ones that didn't fit in the top 15. But let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Let me know if there are any other fragrances that you like from Diptyque. I'd like to find out what they are. But other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.
All right, so at number 16, it would be Orpheon. If you caught my video of boring fragrances, I felt like this is a bit of a boring fragrance for me. I don't know, I do enjoy Fleur de Peau a lot more. It's powdery once again, but there's something about Orpheon just doesn't do it for me. That's why I put it here at number 16. It is an Olivier Peugeot fragrance, created fragrance. It's juniper berries, cedar, tonka beans, jasmine, powder, tobacco. Are you a fan of Orpheon? Let me know. And also let me know where it would end up on a top 15 list. And then at number 17, it would be Vetiverio, this one right here. I, this one, I, I, I never got into the vetiver from Diptyque. This one does come in an EDP. This is the EDT, and I did not write down when uh, the EDP, uh, EDT of this one was launched. It is an Olivier Peschot creative fragrance, and it features hay tea, java vetiver, grapefruit, and rose, and it can get boring a little bit. There's not much excitement with this particular fragrance, so I've featured it here at number 17. But let me know if you're a fan of it. And then finally, this, um, you know, uh, exclusive fragrance for Herod's Opsis that I wanted to feature as a highlight. I don't think it's easy to get. That's why I didn't feature it in the main list. I can't find a perfumer for it either, so I'd love to find out who created this one. But it's in the end musk, bergamot, iris, and incense. It's once again kind of in that powdery realm with Orpheon and Fleur de Peau. I kind of like this a little more than Orpheon but a little less than a Fleur de Peau. So I'm still in a toss up. I, I do enjoy it. I like its muskiness and also the incense touches with the iris musky uh, powderiness. So Opsis is the last fragrance I'm talking about. Other than that guys, I appreciate you tuning in as I said. Have a good one. Bye bye.